You know variables, you know loops, but when you sit down to write a program, you don't know where to start. This is the screencast for you. This is Blank Editor. Welcome to Blank Editor, I'm Al Swigert. In this episode, we're going to be solving problem 2 from projecteuler.net. Projecteuler.net has a great array of programming problems that you can practice on. They usually have some sort of mathematical theme to them, which can be a bit intimidating, but I'll guide you through it step by step. So in problem two, it's going to talk about the Fibonacci sequence. Now, if you forget what the Fibonacci sequence is, remember that it starts off with two numbers, one and one, and then the next number in the sequence is simply the sum of the previous two numbers. So one plus one is two, and then the next number is one plus two, which is three. The next number is two plus three, which is five. The next number is three plus five, which is eight, and so on. Let's get back to the problem. So this is looking at the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, except in their case, where they're starting with 1 and 2. And they look at the first 10 terms of this sequence, and it's these numbers right here. We just calculated them ourselves. And then it asks us to look at all the Fibonacci sequence numbers that do not exceed 4 million. So this sequence of numbers up to 4 million, and it wants us to find the sum of all the even-valued numbers. So if we were just looking at these first 10 numbers, I guess all the numbers that didn't exceed 90, we would add 2 plus 8 plus 34, and then get that final sum. But in this case, it wants us to go all the way up to 4 million. So let's get started from a blank editor. So let's think about this. First, we're going to have to generate Fibonacci numbers. You just shorten that down to Fib numbers. Then we're going to have to go through that list and find all the even numbers in that Fibonacci sequence. And then we're just going to have to sum all of the even numbers that we've found. Well, that doesn't seem too scary. I mean, Fibonacci numbers are a mathematical concept, but really it's just addition. So let's start generating these numbers. Now, let's see, we could have maybe a couple of variables like A and B or rather, number 1 and number 2. It's always a better idea to have actual words instead of single letters for your variable names. That makes them much more descriptive. And we could always just generate the next number by adding them together and then shifting number 2 to number 1. So that way, number 2 in this case would become 2, and then we had added 1 and 2 to be 3, and then 2 plus 3 equals 5. So we'll shift that down there and then make this 5. And then 3 plus 5 is 8, so we'll shift that 5 down and make this 8. And then we can have our program just calculate them that way. But we're also going to need to sort of store them in some sort of list. So how about this? Let's just create a list of Fibonacci numbers. And in fact, we already know the first two are going to be 1 and 2. In fact, this might be all that we need. We don't actually need those two separate numbers. We can just work on the list. Because really, the next number that we want to add to the list is just going to be the last two numbers. And this is using Python's nice negative index syntax. If you don't know what that is, I'll just do a short example. You can say, have a list of strings, cat, dog, mouse. And you're probably familiar with lists in Python, you can have index 0 is the very first item inside this list, and if you want to get the second value, that'll be at index 1. But Python also lets you use negative index numbers, so negative 1 will be the last item in the list, and negative 2 will be the second to last item in the list. It's sort of shorthand for getting the length of the list minus 1. So this negative 1 is really sort of length of that list minus 1. Because the length of this list is going to be 3, but since the list's indexes start at 0, the index of the very last item is going to be 2. It's going to be the length of the list minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And this is actually a fairly common thing to do in programming, so Python has just shortened this down to negative 1. So let's go back to our program. So yeah, we want our code to do something like this, except we want it to do it in a, in a list, obviously, because we want to keep 
running this code over and over again. So for right now, let's just, I don't know, throw in an infinite loop right there. And this will just keep generating Fibonacci numbers and then adding them to that list, uh, theoretically. But this is not ideal because this is going to continue on forever, so we need to come up with some condition of when we want to stop these numbers from calculating. So if we go back to our problem, well, we don't want to exceed 4 million, so how about we just check, um, we keep executing this code and generating Fibonacci numbers as long as the last Fibonacci number that we've generated uh, is still less than 4 million. And let's see what this comes up with. I'm going to not use print debugging and instead properly use Python's logging feature. So I'm going to have to do the two line setup for that. And then let's add a logging message right here. Let's just go ahead and see what the entire list is. I'll just run this. Oops, made a small typo here. All right, let's try that again. And here, let's go ahead and see, are these Fibonacci numbers? Well, we have one, two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, and so on and so on. And that seems to be correct. So 4 million is a big number, but the Fibonacci numbers seem to grow pretty fast, so there aren't that many numbers until it gets above 4 million. You can see this one is at 5 million. But remember, we only want to go uh, until they exceed 4 million. Or we Rather, we don't want values that exceed 4 million. But our loop is always going to keep calculating until it exceeds 4 million. So let's just have a slight correction here and just go ahead and delete the very last value because we're going to know that this loop won't exit until this condition becomes false. By that, by, by the time that happens, we'll have already appended a larger than 4 million number to fib number. So we're just going to go ahead and delete the very last one. Now let's run this and see what it looks like. Oh, that's great. It's just like the old one, except now it's not exceeding 4 million. So let's go to our next step. We want to find all of the even numbers inside this list, all the even Fibonacci numbers. Now, if you don't know how to do that, no problem. That's what Google's for. Let's go to the Googles. Find out if a number is even Python. And we'll have multiple people telling us how to do this. And it turns out to be kind of similar to what we did with the multiples number in the previous episode with FizzBuzz. So if we want to determine if a number is even, we just mod it by two, and if that's zero, then we know it's even. And this makes sense, because if a number is a multiple of two, then it's even. Or rather, all even numbers are multiples of two. So we want to pull out the even numbers from this, so let's create a new list. This isn't very memory efficient, but it'll get the job done. So even fib numbers. That'll be a new list, and then we want to iterate over all of the Fibonacci numbers in the Fib numbers list. So we want to determine if Fib number is even. So we mod it by two. If that is zero, then we know that it is an even number. And so let's just go ahead and remember this in our even Fib numbers list. So I'll just append it. There. Now I think that's right. Let's go ahead and add another logging statement and see if that comes out looking correct. So, yep, so two, that is a Fibonacci number here, and it's even. Eight, it's also a Fibonacci number here. The next one should be 34, which we do see here, and it goes all the way up to the very end. So that's great. Now we just have to add all of these numbers together. And we could do that with Python's sum function. But that would be kind of cheating. I think we should just write that code ourselves. So we really want to iterate over all the numbers in even fib numbers. Now let me just make a variable total sum is equal to zero. 
And so for each of those numbers, we want to add it to our total sum. And then finally, we're just going to print out that total sum. And let's run this code and see what it looks like. That is 4,613,732. See if that's correct, according to the Project Euler site. And yep, looks like we got this answer. Now again, we can make this a little bit easier. We don't actually have to remember all of these numbers, all of the even Fibonacci numbers. We do have to keep track of all of the original Fibonacci numbers because we always need the last two ones, whether they're even or odd, in order to calculate the next Fibonacci number. But when it comes to the even Fibonacci numbers, we don't actually have to remember all that. We could just keep the total right here. So I'm gonna get rid of this list and Python's linter is gonna start complaining about all of this. I'm going to get rid of this line and instead and instead say total sum should be added should add fib number to that total sum. And we don't need this. We don't need that summation code. We can just leave it right like that. So let's run this one more time just to be sure that we're getting the correct answer. Yep, it's the same answer as before. So we've solved the second problem on Project Euler.